Hey friends, it's me, the Ebony Otaku, the well-rounded nerd. So hey, more anime and action figures. I was looking through my collection trying to decide which ones I wanted to talk about uh, for this video and I realized there is a box of figures that is missing. Um, I was looking at my Rurouni Kenshin figures and then I looked at my Helsing figures and I realized oh, there are some figures that were in a box that are gone. And I'll probably never see them again. I had an 11 inch Alucard doll. Yeah, and uh, he's gone. Um, and then I was also looking at um, the the show I'm going to talk about today, which is Amegami Sama or Oh My Goddess um, in the English. And I, I really enjoyed that show. It was my introduction into the genre we call harem, but we're going to talk about it. Um, if you're ever going to watch one of those, that's like the tamest one <laughs> you can watch. Um, but... Um, yeah, I had uh, several other of those. As I was looking at the figures, I was like, wait a minute, didn't I have, don't I have, and I looked up on my wall where I've got figures hanging that I didn't know what to do with, and they're not up there. And I realized that they're probably in the same box with Alucard, my other Helsings, and those other Amegami Sama figures. So, whew, but I can't complain. I still have a rather significant collection. And there may still be a box that I have not unpacked. So as I completely, um, over time, get to a couple more things, I may find them. Along with that little um, Bruticus that I cl keep calling Devastator for some reason. Um, as long as, and when I get to my, is it Bruticus or Devastator? The, the Constructicons. Unite to form. Dev it's Devastator, yeah. Who's Brut Which one's Bruticus? Was that like race cars that turned into Bruticus? I can't remember. Um, I thought my brain's not working right now. But yeah, I, I've got that little stack of Constructicons as well, so I'd love to find them. I still have a, a few bins that aren't completely unpacked, and I'm hoping that I find them. Fingers crossed, because that was a little sad. Uh, but let's talk about Amegami Sama. We did this, I've, I've done this with Sailor Moon. I still got more Sailor Moon figures to look at. I love comparing them. Let me know if you're enjoying that. Um, and then I did it with Evangelion. Uh, I'm going to do it with Rurouni Kenshin. And of course, I do it with Transformers. But it's an easy way to talk about anime and, and not get a copyright strike. Because you can't copyright strike me playing with dolls. Or can you? I'll find out. So, Amegami Sama, Oh My Goddess, centers around the goddess Beldandi. And if you've ever read any Norse mythology, the names that are all used in this particular anime and manga will be very familiar to you. So this show is kind of special to me um, because when I was first getting into anime, you know, you just stumble across properties. You don't really know what you're reading and watching until you get through it. Berserk. <laughs> yeah, go back and watch the Berserk video because uh, I got that by accident. Not accident. I, I rented it on purpose, but I was a kid and it was a cartoon. So my parents didn't think anything of it. We got it at Blockbuster. Just dated myself. Um, and it's okay until the last two episodes. And then it's like, oh, <laughs> the original. So yeah, parents. Like, who will rat out a kid trying to watch some uh, Cowboy Bebop when they're 10 is me. <laughs> so it's like, save that trauma for adulthood. Um, but yeah, this was one of the, the earlier shows that I got into. And I got into it because it was pretty. I, I obviously have a love of cute, beautiful things. It's just my personality. Which is funny because when I was in high school in the first part of college... I was a total goth chick, which the remnants of my goth days, you actually, you know, you can probably see in my hair. Um, you know, I've got some, you know, gothy boots and a few gothy cos cosplays, but it is not my primary go-to fashion anymore. It used to just be how I was. Like, I had, like, new rocks. I had two, I had a short pair and a tall pair of new rocks. Like, if you know the new rocks, like, if you know, you know. They make a quality boot, by the way. Um, you gotta break them in, though. They, they ain't not gonna feel good the first time you put them on your feet. Give it, give it a month. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, uh, that, that was what I was into. But as, you know, Somewhere in there, the, the cutesy part of me was always there. Um, she just had to wait till I was 25 to fully just onto the scene. Um, hey, I found out you got more free drinks at the bar if you were cute instead of scary. Not my fault. That's just how society works. 
but um oh my god oh my goddess was it was pretty so if you think um in style so if, if you hear anything back there it's starting to storm so i can't control the weather I'll try to talk over it. But if you think about styles, how we've seen anime kind of evolve and manga and the style, like we're we're real we're real moe looking these days, like bigger eyes, rounder faces, um, and also very manga-ish. You'll notice a lot of times in in some of the some of the manga you've got more leaner, slender figures, the exaggeration of form is greater. Like that's kind of where we are in modernity. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. Everything's got this sleek, bubbly look to it. That's the only way I can say it. It's like it's bubbly. Everything's bubbly now. Um but if you go back to like the nineties, eighties, seventies and look at anime, um and manga, manga, uh, the, the comics, uh, you'll see things, I don't know, they have this grittier look to them. Um, and then there's like the in-between, which is like the 90s and the early aughts. Um, these guys are 90s, early aughts is when they came out. So it was kind of in that transition from the more grittier look. That's the best way I can describe it. She's not an animation major. Theater and English are not animation. I'm describing this for an outsider, okay? If you have the real words, throw them in the comments. Um, into more of that bubbly look. And that's why the show appealed to me. I got into Omega. Oh I was, okay, let me be real. She was a bit torrenting. If you know, you know. Because back then you couldn't get every shit. Nothing came on in America. You could watch Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z. Oh, and Digimon and Pokemon. Like, that's what we had. <laughs> okay. And then, like, all the really old cartoons, like Speed Racer and, and you know, Astro Boy and all those. Um, found out that, like, the little bits of Maya the Bee were anime. Fun fact. Um, but, yeah, that's what we had. So, like, if you wanted to watch a bunch of stuff and not pay, give Tower Records $700 to get one videotape or one DVD... Bit towards red. We don't have to do that anymore. She pays her she pays her seven ninety nine a month to Country Roll. Okay, <laughs> all right. Country Roll and Netflix get my money every month just so I can watch anime. No other reason. Um, but yeah, they were starting to transition to that bubbly look. And when I was doing some torrenting and and looking on the different anime websites, this is one that kept getting recommended to me uh, based on my love of Sailor Moon and Card Captor Sakura, Magic Knight Ray Earth. They're like, you'll like this one. Well, I had never encountered a harem before the so if i'm gonna put her down for a second do you, do you mind going down it's okay okay all right she's going away for a second she'll be back so i never encountered a harem show if you don't know what harem anime and manga are they are um where you've got one gender and 40 of the other and they all like this person. <laughs> there, there's harem and reverse harem. So tra traditional harem would be like, you know, think about the imperial harem. There's the emperor and all of them concubines, <laughs> you know. So in a harem-based show, you have one individual who somehow just has that just magnetic personality that everybody loves. It, it's usually a guy. And all these girls are like, ah. And some of them get real weird. Because when I... When I um, and discovered oh my goddess i thought they were all going to be like oh my goddess and they're they're not some of them just brothers conflict i'm looking at you don't watch that show <laughs> diabolic lovers i'm looking at you mm -mm, no mm -mm. they're too far is too far <laughs> and they take you too far um there's another one that i can't remember the title of but like this guy has a bunch of half sisters I did not finish that show. I got like three episodes in and I was like, oh, <laughs> no, there's a limit. <laughs> that was the limit. Um, but you do you. Um, but but yeah, so you'll have a guy and, and magically there's a bunch of girls that love him. Um, and it's not even necessarily like romantic love. A lot of times it is a romantic dr romance driven plot. But like all the other girls are like supporting the one guy the, the one girl out of the group that should be with the guy. And there, like, might be a couple of detractors in there. But overall, everybody's like, this is the love we support, but we love him too. <laughs> you know? He's still our friend, even though we can't be with him. Um, I think another example of one that I've watched, let me think. Like, Ranma One Half would be one. That's an interesting show. Uh, love Hina is another one. I've seen both of those. Love Hina starts, you know, going left a little bit. Ranma... It's, it's got a little bit of that, that sailor, 
uh, them Sailor Stars going on. If you know, you know. Um, trying to think of ones that I'm looking at, at a list here of ones I've actually watched because I can't talk to stuff. Toradora, uh, that's a more modern one. Uh, so that, those would be Clannad. I forgot about Clannad. Um, Clannad was one. Oh, oh, what is it? High School? Is it, not High School of the Dead. The one where they're running from the zombies. You know the one. I actually watched that one last year when I was recovering from surgery, and it was hilarious. There's a couple of scenes in there. It's like, come on, y'all. <laughs> we went we went a little bit too far, but it's still it's a it's a it's a funny show. Um, but it's basically one gender being surrounded by the other, and they all have an attachment to them. The reverse harem is the reverse. It's a girl who has a bunch of boys attached to her, and that's the one I watched more of um, because I'm a girl. <laughs> and uh the ones I can think of the most like Wallflower was one of my favorites a little nerdy girl and then like she had these moments where like when she would get mad they'd be like oh god she's hot let's all make her hot and like this group of hot boys like tries to make her beautiful and you know um uh do you remember Fushigi Yugi say that three times fast Fushigi Yugi it translates into like the mysterious play um, but it's about two girls that get sucked into a book and transported to another world so it's an isekai I'm sorry yeah yeah, Isekai, um, so Otherworld, and then it is also a, a reverse harem because there's all these, like, magic boys that are in love with one girl because <laughs> that's how it works. But um, then one of them, you know, wins the day. Oh, duh, girl, Fruits Basket would be a reverse harem. So you've got, but it's one of those that's more innocent. The story of Fruits Basket, I'm going to tell you that once you get way into it, it's like, oh, that's what happened? Like that remake of Fruits Basket? My God, today. Um, it lets a lot of light in. But it's, it's, it's one person who's attracted, who, who just has a personality that pulls people in for some reason. It could be because they're magical. It could be because they're beautiful. They are the kindest person. They're the shyest person. Uh, people see something in them, whatever it is. Or it's a dude and his 30 half-sisters living on an island. I'm not, I'm not telling you that show. That one. <laughs> There's a limit. Um, but with Oh My Goddess, it had an aesthetic to it that I really liked. So it had that just, that kind of beautifulness. That's the only way you can describe it. It had beautifulness to it. So when I saw it recommended to me and I saw the picture, I was like, oh, that does look like something I like. And um, I did end up really enjoying the show. So if I'm going to recommend a harem anime and manga to get into, I would start with that one. It's it's a little tamer. Um, and it's it's a pleasant story. So back to this heifer and her sisters. This is Belle Dandy. And it, first of all, let's look at this beautiful figure. This is her battle goddess outfit. Um, Belle Dandy is the oldest of three sisters. And Oh My Goddess is based around a lot of Norse Nordic mythology. So in um, Norse mythology, uh, the source of life for the planet is the tree Yggdrasil. Yeah, I can say Yggdrasil. Um, so Yggdrasil literally is the tree of life. Like when I do the SEA, a lot of my garb right now is more like medieval Norse. And I've got like Yggdrasil pendants and stuff like that that go on my garb. I do like a Viking dress uh, kind of garb typically. One, because it looks real good. <laughs> like the, the cut on the Viking dress works for me really well. Um, and they're easy to come by. <laughs> um... And, and then also, um, you know, the, the jewelry that goes with it is just fire. Um, but in the mythology, in, in Norse mythology, you know, much like a lot of um, uh, non-monotheistic religion. So a monotheistic religion is a religion where there's one god. And then you've got the, it's not multi-theistic, there's another word, but I can't think of it right now. Um, but when there are many gods. So Norse mythology, there are many gods. And... The tree of life are, is literally like a giant life computer that is running the universe, that's running Earth and the planet, um, you know, from Valhalla and all that kind of thing. Um, so think Thor, kind of, yeah, same vein as like the Thor and, you know, and, and all that going back on with Hel Hela and, and all of them. Same, same type of mythology. But in this, um, the writer actually based a lot of their names and things around gods and goddesses that were in that mythology. So Belle Dandy's name actually comes from the goddess Vera Dandy, uh, which she was like a goddess of like light and love. 
like she's just a bright, bubbly person. Um, but the way that Yggdrasil and Tyr, God, um, has organized things is basically there are gods and goddesses that run Yggdrasil's computer that's running the world. And if Yggdrasil gets a bug, the world has a bug, basically. And there's also a goddess hotline that is set up um, so that people somehow magically get to a phone that can connect back to the goddess call center. They could summon a goddess and get a, get a wish granted or summon a god and get a wish granted. Belle Dandy and her sisters work on the goddess hotline. They all have jobs in heaven. Um, Belle Dandy is a goddess first class, which means she has basically unrestricted abilities to do whatever she wants to. She's extremely powerful. She's one of them that's so powerful. They're like, look, you real, you, you good and all. Look, wear this little jewel here on your ear and just don't be too powerful. It's like one of those amulets that keeps back <laughs> the crazy, <laughs> basically, so that it can't can't destroy the world. Because she's, she, she's Sailor Saturn. She real cute and good until she get mad. Then she can destroy the world, basically. Um, but she is a first-class goddess, and she's one that everyone celebrates. She is one of those that everyone's just like, Belle Dandy, Feather Dandy, you are the best. We love you. <laughs> um, and her sisters are goddesses second class. We'll get to them in a second. Um, but what I really love about the way that they, they did the goddesses, and I've got another figure of her I'm going to pick up, and she real fragile. Um is that the goddesses, when they are using certain types of powers, it manifests itself in them being able to call out an angel. So when she goes into like battle mode or needs to do something amazing, she literally has an angel that comes out of her that is another manifestation of power. She can call on that angel's power and all of them do and all of their angels reflect them. And I think that was part of that beauty that I really loved because all of the angels are insane. If you ever, if you don't want to watch the whole show, watch the movie. The movie basically is the show like in 70 minutes, um, with a nice little tidy bow <laughs> at the end. Um, but there's a scene where all of their angels come out at once and you can see how their angels are tailored to the goddesses and they literally are singing to Yggdrasil because someone tried to destroy it and they bring Yggdrasil back to life. It is just beautiful. Anywho, we're not going to do a jump cut here because I don't want to drop her. Look at this. So this was a special series run that I got on um, eBay back in the day. There's three. I've got all three of them, but she is... She dusty. I need to get a can of air. Um, but I've had her for, oh, good God, 17, 18 years now. And she's like 15 pieces. Yeah, I know. Who decided that? Um, but this is her up in heaven goddess aversion. And this is her battle goddess mode. I don't have her as regular goddess. Or if I do, it's in that box. I can't remember. Um, but a young man on earth named Keiichi who's just an average college student, a little shy, a little goofy. That, that's how these hair anime work, right? It's somebody who's like a societal outcast, like not the norm, who gets all the hotties. <laughs> all of, that's just how it works. So it's everybody's hopes and dreams. Like, look at all these hot people that love me. <laughs> um, but he's just having a day, and he manages to accidentally dial the goddess hotline. And Belle Dante appears to grant him a wish. And she show up and Kate, she go, oh, you're real cute. You're cute, cute. <laughs> but he wishes for her to stay with him forever. And she does. And hijinks ensue. Now, Belle Dandy heads herself down to Earth and is there for a while. And eventually her sisters are like, where is Belle Dandy? <laughs> where is she? And that's where this ball of fire comes in. This is Erd, which they did not change Erd's name from the Norse myth mythological name. But Erd is Beldandy's first youngest, younger sister. So there's three sisters, Beldandy, Erd, Skuld. Erd is the middle child. You'll notice that her skin is dark. This is one thing I don't like about mythology is like, I, like there's a lot of uh, religions in America too that do this. I'm going I'm to soapbox for just a second. Why is it that we signify somebody being evil with dark skin? Dark elves. Look at you Mormons. I can't then. <laughs> very, very, very small little rant there. Just, just tiny one. Um, but anyway, you'll notice her skin is darker. Um, because she's half demon. Her mother is Hild, and Hild is one of the ones that I know I have. Because when I was looking around and I was refreshing my memory on this show, I was like, don't I have a Hild? I have her mom. I 
don't know where she is. And I think she's in that box with Alcard. <laughs> Anywho, but because she's half demon, half god, her dad is a god. So all three of them got the same father. That Papa was a rolling stone, what can I say? Um, and yet, and it, she's the one who gets to, anyway, but she is a goddess second class. So she has management level access to her powers. She is actually the most powerful of all three of these goddesses. She could be a goddess first class. It was offered to her. She rejected it. Um, it comes with too much responsibility. She is basically, she basically runs Yggdrasil. She is um, part of the team that makes sure the, the computer runs the way it's supposed to. School does a debugger, um, but she's kind of a, a manager of Yggdrasil. But she's incredibly powerful because she's the combination of a, a god and a demon. So that just made her extra. When her wings come out, she has a black wing and a white wing. A lot of times when you see her characterized, she's got half black hair, half white hair. This is one of my favorite cosplays to do. I mean, I, I also do recognize, you know, back up my little rant there for a second. Uh, she tries not to be problematic, but once in a while it comes out. <laughs> um, but I do recognize that this does give um, more cosplay options. But I'm also, for, for people who have darker skin, I get it. Um, like, we got one dark Sailor Scout, Sailor Pluto. And they changed that in the anime. But in the manga, she blacky black. <laughs> well, she's not black, but she she real dark skinned. <laughs> My dog is laid out on the floor like he has a job. <laughs> but, yeah, so, but I, I'm one of those people who's like, it's a cartoon. You dress up as whoever you want. <laughs> you know, um, but she's kind of the wild card of them. Um, she's, uh, uh, that might be why she's my favorite character. She, she chooses not to have the restrictions that Heaven would put on her. Because even if she was a goddess first class, unlimited, there's still a restriction there. Like, if she... As a goddess second class, if she acts a fool, she can get forgiveness and get away with it and go back to life as normal. If she was a goddess second class, running around acting a fool, they destroy her. <laughs> Basically, heaven would get rid of her. So part of it is, you know, she's got that rebellious spirit, but she's also very smart. When she realizes Belle Dandy's not there, she just takes her happy butt on down to Earth to find her sister. Um, and finds her sister just cozied up with Keiichi. She's like, sister, why are you here? Because he asked me to stay. Heather, come home. You can break that contract. But he's so sad and pitiful. And without me, he's even more sad and pitiful. Ugh, I'm going to stay here and cause havoc until you decide to come home. Okay, I'm glad my sister's here. And that's how that goes. She proceeds to be very problematic, um, trying to push Keiichi into relationships with others, trying to push her and him and Belle Dandy together. She's just problematic. The thing is, Belle Dandy had permission to be on heaven. She did not. <laughs> so she gets in trouble for, for being down on, on earth without heaven's permission. Um, but she gets her rank and status back. That's just how she rolls. Like I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm obeying the rules today, tomorrow. Eh, we'll see. I respect it. Cause I'm one of those people who's like, eh, I've been yelled at before. I'll be yelled at again. It's fine. <laughs> you know, if I feel like I'm doing the right thing or I just don't feel like doing what I was told, <laughs> I will, I will take the yelling. It is totally okay. Her goddess form is really fragile, but I think she is the most beautiful of the three Greek, I'm sorry, a Norse goddess statues. Um, her head just always be wanting to fall off those. So I gotta be real tender with this. Um, but she is, she's also the tallest of all of them. Um, I just love the flowing movement that they got in these figures. Isn't that not gorgeous? Like this is the most peaceful Ur ever is. She's not peaceful by nature. She doesn't do peace. I respect it. Then finally, of our main trio to come down is Schooled. She's their baby sister. Um, there are other goddesses that come down. Payorth is one that comes down. I have a Payorth. Don't know where she is. She's in that box with Alucard and Hild. Oh, um, fingers crossed that there is one more box that's got stuff in it that I haven't unpacked. Because I know I didn't leave a figure. I would never do that. Anywho, but she's the baby sister. She, like Erd, is also a goddess second class. Um, she is not super powerful, though. Her magic is not very strong. Um, but she's incredibly smart. She is a math genius, which, you know, when you're thinking gods and goddesses in heaven, for her to be a genius, she a genius genius. Um, she debugs Yggdrasil. Um, so, Beldandy's out there granting wishes 
unlimited access to all the things. Um, Erd is managing the Yggdrasil office. She's debugging Yggdrasil. They all have jobs. I kind of like those versions of Heaven where it's not just, you know, the gods up there looming over humanity. I like the versions where, no, like, this is a whole society and we got to run this thing. And that that's how they set it up. And, oh, my goddesses, the gods and goddesses are running things. <laughs> and they got to keep it under control or everything falls apart. Um, but she gets permission to follow her sister's down. So she's... Um, she's not just smart in the math way, she's also an inventor, and she actually builds a little character called a, a Banpai, a little robot, and if you buy, if you were able to buy back in the day, all of these different figures, they all came with a piece of Banpai, and you could put them together, you know, if you open them, look, I do open figures sometimes, it happens, um, but you could open them and end up being able, I wonder, I wonder if Hild is open, and I put her somewhere, I think I opened Hild. I'll find her. <laughs> um, mind wandering. But yeah, so she gets permission to go down to, to Earth from heaven to find her sister. Now, she comes down and first, of course, encounters Erd. And Erd's like, hey girl, hey. And she's like, where's my big perfect sister? Oh, uh, she's she shacked up with this little human boy. And they're like real lovey-dovey. Well, bring her back to heaven. She's too perfect for a human. Well, um, you go you go hash it out with her. I'm going to go cause chaos. Bye. And then she goes, and then we have Valdanti come back, and finally, you know, school gets to talk to her. Big perfect sister, come back to heaven. We miss you. Uh, yeah, I kind of am in love with this this human. How could you love a human? Your God is first class and perfect. He's not good enough for you. I will destroy him. And she goes off to destroy him. <laughs> That's what these three characters do. Now, most of who comes to Earth to be around Keiichi are initially gods and goddesses, mostly goddesses because it's a harem anime, who will want to break them up. But then they see their dynamic and they're like, okay, we get this. I think the purest version of their dynamic is in the movie. Um, Keiichi runs a race club. He's the president of a race club um, at his college. And I've never seen this before. It's called sidecar racing. I would love to see it live if it's a real thing. I have no idea. Um, I do love, I mean, sidebar, I do love, like, endurance motorcycle racing. I think that's fascinating. Um, but, but it's a real low-to-the-ground kind of go-kart kind of thing where one person's, like, on an almost flat motorcycle, and then you've got another person who helps control the drag and resistance, and they are moving as you're going around curves and stuff. So they on this side, they on top, they on this side. And if you don't completely trust that person or you're not completely simpatico, it will not work. And there's a scene in the movie where they are doing that racing. It's beautifully animated. And you can just see that they're, they are supposed to be together. They could not do this together if they did not have that kind of love and relationship. But of course, like all, you know, love anime, it builds over time. Belle Dandy doesn't even realize at first that she's in love with Keiichi. She thinks that she's just doing her goddess duty. But remember, we talked about that little earring she got that shows how, uh, that holds back her power, it holds back to crazy. Because if, like, some other girl talked to him, all of a sudden she mad. <laughs> she want to let out her madness. And if that earring wasn't there, she'd destroy the planet. Um, but I think Schooled, the only one that I'm not super a fan of, it came in the set, but Schooled is cute. I don't think they made her as beautiful as her sisters. Just... She's cute enough. She's the younger one. I guess in Earth years, she's like 13, 14. But in like God years, she's like 700. <laughs> you know, which is young for a goddess. But I think, I don't know. She just doesn't have the the elegance that this one does. It might be because of how they did her hair. Um, because she's got long black hair. Um, I mean, look at her hair. See, this is, I actually think this one is a little flowier and prettier than the one that was made to just be super pretty. I don't know how they manage that mess. But they did. Um... But they keep coming back. Gods and goddesses keep coming and trying to break them up. And then everyone eventually realizes they that they are supposed to be together. And even over time, Belle Dandy says herself, I'm here because I love him. And it's kind of cute. And I think that's why I like that story. It's one of those stories that reminds you that love is more than just physicality. Um... You know, now look, I'm real pro-girl because I are a girl. So, you know, in my head, even the ugliest girl beats the prettiest boy. That's how I am. <laughs> you know, like I, I used to always say, like, all girls settle. It's a joke. Don't take it too seriously. But no, there, there has to be more to why people are together than just how they look. Um, 
you know, just looks will get you, will get you talking to each other. But to keep you together, it has to be more than that. That's why I don't understand about all the modern obsession with a look. Like one of the shows that I watch a lot of reviews on, I don't actually watch the show because who does? It's like 90 Day Fiance. And there's like two or three couples on there who are like real into body mods and that kind of thing, which, hey, you do you. If that's what you want to do, you do that. You do that. I will not, but you do that. Um, but it's very obvious the only reason that these couples got together is because they met a physical aesthetic that the other one found pleasing. But there's nothing about each other's personalities that they like. Nothing at all. And they're always cheating on each other, always talking down to each other, always cussing at each other. They're with each other to be on a TV show. Nothing else. And everyone is miserable watching them and interacting with them. Why are we together if you hate each other that much? For a check. Yeah, money. Money makes everything better. <laughs> you know. Um, it's kind of sad. <laughs> but with shows like this, it's... um. Like, Keiji's not ugly. You know, I don't think there's anybody out there who's just, you know, I mean, we all are different, but I don't believe in ugly people. I believe we're all just different, and your aesthetic appeals to the person it's supposed to appeal to. That's how it works. Um, but everyone's like, why would this so perfect goddess want to be with this regular, degular college student? She literally could have anyone, but she wants him. And it's it's that way in the reverse harems as well. Uh, Fushi Yugi. No, we're not talking. Yeah, Fushi Yugi. You know, it's like why would um, Tamahome, which ends up being her love interest, he's like the greatest fighter or whatever. And there's also the the emperor, um, who of the little world that she ends up in. They both are all about her. And there's one other character whose name I can't remember right now. He's got the red hair. There's always a redhead. Um, but the three of them are the ones that actually fall in love with her. The rest of them just think she's great. Or if they love her, they just kind of keep it inside. Um, but it's like, why would these men who could pick anyone pick this girl? Because she's just an ordinary high school girl. Or even in um, Fruits Basket, you know, Toru, um, you know, ends up falling in love with Kyo. And Kyo resisted, resisted, resisted because he really is in love with her. And she literally is like the most ordinary of ordinary girls. There's nothing special about Toru except that she's been through a lot of trauma. And that trauma did not make her a bad person. That trauma made her love her life and people more. And that made her someone that could accept people regardless of what they've been through. So she's not, even in the show, she is not even close to being the cutest on the screen. She's not the closest to being the most talented. She is an average student at best. She doesn't make A's. Uh, she don't make F's. She's just right in the middle. She's in the middle on looks. She's in the middle on what. She's just a medial. <laughs> and let all of these people, not just the initial guy, she it starts out as a hair and man and it's like everybody loves her. <laughs> you know? It reminds us that everyone deserves love. Look at me. Look at me. Everyone, you, you deserve love, okay? Everyone deserves to be loved, 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 loved for who they are. And there is a right person for you. Um, and even if you don't know why someone loves you, when, when it's that right connection, you'll know. Because you don't have to try so hard when it's right. I mean, me and my husband, um, we've never had a fight. We've had some intense fellowship you know, over, you know, points of misunderstanding, but we are very good about if we realize that the caller might be rising of going, oh, hey, I think we've got feelings here. Let's discuss. He's the only person I've ever done that with because every, every boyfriend, every guy I've ever dated, I will, I would jump to yelling. Like he's the only person on earth whose feelings I don't want to hurt <laughs> besides my mom. Like anyone else, like your feelings are, we'll talk about it. <laughs> but him, no, I can't yell at him. I can't even think about yelling at him. Even the thought of yelling at him brings me pain because he's just too nice, you know. But we, our love has been effortless with one another. Now, that doesn't mean life itself hasn't had trials. But even in the trials that we've been through together, we, our love for each other is very effortless. It's very, when people see us together, they're like, yeah, we see how this works. Because like, when we first started dating, you know, um, I had a track record of taking terrible men. <laughs> I should do some story times. I've told you a couple of stories. Um, you know, and, you know, he, uh, had friends who were very close with him and they knew his history. So, you know, they were suspicious of me and I'm used to everybody loving me. So that was real weird when I met his friends and they were suspicious of me. And I was like, wait, I'm the good one. 
No, he's real holy. I'm ratchet. I used to not be ratchet. Now I, I look real ratchet next to him. <laughs> but um, once they got to know me and saw us together, they were like, oh, yeah, y'all belong together. And then when people come in here and see this foolishness going on, you know, friends come over and stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, she is. Uh, she is definitely the dork for you. <laughs> Because I guess I'm not necessarily dork presenting. Like, I'm not a traditional looking nerd. <laughs> I'm like, come on, her hair is always some color other than black. <laughs> you know. Um, I, I wear my anime hoodies loud and proud. I, I hate summer because I can't wear anime hoodies because it's too hot. <laughs> Bunny ears, come on. It, if you could get away with it, you'd wear them. <laughs> but, but everyone deserves that person. We all have people. And I think that's what's what I love about a harem anime. It shows you that you could have lots of people, but at the end of the day, there is a person. There is a person for you. Out of all those people, there is a person. Y'all, there's 8 billion on, people on the planet. There's a person for you. And love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not boast. Love does no ill to one another. When you have a love that's like that... Lo when when love conquers all, then you know you've got that right person for you. There could have been other persons, but your person, you'll know. That's my nerdy inspiration for the day. All of that from a hair and anime about some goddesses coming down to earth. But I think when people fall in love, they see the person they're in love with as their god or goddess. It's kind of beautiful. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.